Chapter 20 Revelations from Military Veteran Derek Johnson Recent years have exposed details of military operations, constitutional law, and the powers to maintain the Republic, thanks in great part of meticulous research by people like Derek Johnson and the Documents.info. A former military man, Johnson has fashioned himself a vital narrator of how an intricately covert operation was put into motion as far back as 2017, a true constitutional law and military guiding outing. These revelations offer a unique insight into the political and military environment in America, explaining many of the drastic events that have so dramatically altered their country over these past two decades. The foundation behind this military operation that continues to take place is the Oath of Enlistment, which every service member agrees to adhere by. This is the important oath. It makes clear that we stand for no federal office or man per se, but only for our U.S. Constitution. This may help understand what has gone on in one military maneuver after another over recent years. The military exists not to fight wars, but to shield the nation from foreign and domestic threats, a mission that does not stop once it leaves the battlefield. It continues into governance and ensuring our governing bodies work properly within constitutional constraints. A couple of the revelations that Johnson provides is a clear understanding between civilian law and military law. Many people, including some in the military itself, are simply unaware of how dramatically different these two legal systems can be, he says. It is an error to conflate the rules that govern military operations and those which limit involvement in civilian governance. This misinterpretation has caused confusion regarding certain military operations that have transpired recently and concerning the extent to which continuity of government and national security necessitates such action. An integral part of Johnson's disclosure was the role that Donald Trump plays in this military operation which is being implemented. During his presidency, Trump signed numerous executive orders and national emergency declarations creating the legal pretext for a military operation to hold the federal elections under control. Johnson argues that, parallels with, name of document, letter from James R., as highlighted by Paul, these orders, including Executive Order 13848 imposing certain sanctions in the event of foreign interference in a United States election, establish the legal foundations for military action to protect governance. Johnson includes one of the most far-reaching claims there is, that we are, contradictorily, a domestic and continental empire with exactly 54 states, i.e. 50, rather than only being home to an ever-beefing nation of American citizens. His boldest claim, though, relates to the federalization of National Guard units. In this briefing, he says Trump activated one million National Guard reservists to help fight an insurrection. I suspect that here, much as Mahoney suggested about Newsom, he is telling us what he expects people were thinking. In the subsequent Biden administration, Johnson said in an interview, this activation has continued to date with Joe Biden having renewed such orders and national emergency declarations without actually terminating them. As Johnson sees it, this itself indicates Trump has not conceded the presidency and is still essentially commander-in-chief holding private meetings after giving orders to certain military leaders as well as intelligence agencies behind the scenes. Johnson relates this to the ongoing operation of military law, in particular the Military Justice Act 2016 and Law of War Manual 2015, understanding them as intervening to clarify military powers during times of crisis in distinction from civilian justice systems. Connecting these legal provisions with the executive orders and continuity of government directive signed by Trump, Johnson contends that we are witnessing a military-led transition to preserve internally constitutional law in response to a never-before-happened national emergency. Furthermore, Johnson's analysis suggests that the mainstream media and much of the public are unaware of the full scope of these military operations. The sealed indictments, growing reports of corruption, and targeted actions against individuals involved in financial crimes and human rights abuses are all part of a larger plan to drain the swamp and restore lawful governance. 
Johnson contends that the true extent of this military operation will become clear as more indictments are unsealed, revealing the depth of corruption in both domestic and international systems. While these revelations are especially pertinent in the U.S., it affects audiences worldwide. Yes, a joint military operation is carried out internationally and globally in order to dismantle these corrupt structures that have seen men beating up on his fellow men for too long, according to Johnson. These have revealed financial crimes, human trafficking, and money laundering, as well as capturing the shadowy underbelly of some powerful individuals and institutions that has gone unchecked for years. The pitch is that the military response isn't based in reaction, but in action, to restore and then transition this moribund republic back into a constitutional form of government. That means taking care of immediate danger and building national security, economic self-dependence, while maintaining political stability. The work of Johnson in collaboration with the Documents and the Gramercy Group. It provides clear info not legal advice and guidance on the law's functioning as all supporting constitutional framework for this use of military force. It encourages citizens to learn more about it. In short, Johnson provides insight and information that helps tie together the complicated military issues at play across the U.S. right now. Johnson traces these actions back to constitutional law, executive orders, and military directives that force Trump aside by making the case we are currently amidst a covert running war led by our own military white hats. For this is an operation grander than anything ever orchestrated in history, one designed with purpose of preserving the Republic, honoring constitutional integrity, yet as well restoring justice within what was once a corrupt system. Indeed, this military operation grounded on justice and transparency will be influencing not only the future of America, but also that of the rest of the world for many years to come, as increasingly more clarifications are being known. The papers can be found on the documents.info.